To properly understand how Git operates, it's important to know how Git stores data. In this lecture, we will explore how Git stores data. After taking this lecture, you will learn the following. First, what the Delta model and Snapshot model are and how they store data. Second, what a hash function is and its characteristics. Third, how commit hashes are generated. Let's get started. There is a method called the Delta model for storing data. The Delta model is a traditional method used in version control systems. When a change occurs in a file, only the modified parts are saved and creating a new version by comparing it with the previous version. Let's see how this method works through a diagram. The diagram illustrates how the Delta model works. As you can see, there are three files, file A, file V, and file C. Each time a file is changed, version 1, 2, 3, and 4 are saved. Version 1 stores the original contents of the file. For example, the original contents of a file A is saved in version 1. Subsequently, each change is recorded by saving only the modified parts. Let's take a look at file B. Initially, it has some content. During the second save, there were no changes to file B, so no modifications were recorded. In the third version, there were changes, so those were recorded. In the final version, there were no changes again, so nothing was recorded. This is how the Delta model stores data by comparing and saving only the differences from the previous versions. In version control systems, command to recreate a specific state is called checkout. This diagram shows the state of version 4 after checking out. To recreate this state, you have to apply all the changes from the first one to the desired one. When version 4 is checked out, the contents of file is as shown, which is the result of combining versions 1, 2, 3, and 4. The same applies to file B and the same applies to file C. We have looked at the high level operation of the Delta model through the diagram. Now, let's dive into a more detailed example. Here, we have two files, hello.c and foos.html. One is a C file and the other is a HTML file. Let's see how the Delta model works as we modify and save these files. In the first version, the unchanged initial state of the two files is saved as version 1. A line containing chicken was added to the foos file. There are no changes to hello.c, nothing is saved in version 2 for this file. We modify the foos file again by removing the text feature. When this version is created, it only records the deletion of a feature. Similarly, hello.c remains unchanged, so no content is saved for it. Finally, in the hello.c file, the text hello world was changed to hello git. When this is saved, version 4 records only the modified line. Since the foos file were not changed, nothing related to it is recorded. This demonstrates how the Delta model generates new versions by comparing the current state with the previous version and only including the changes. How does the checkout work to recreate a specific state? It starts from the initial version and sequentially adds all versions up to the desired version to recreate the state. When checking out version 4, it starts with the content of a version 1 as the changes from version 2, version 3, and finally version 4 to reach the final desired state. The Delta model is efficient in terms of storage usage. However, there is noticeable performance drawback. When checking out, it has to repeatedly apply the differences from the first versions to the desired version. In the example we just saw, there were four versions. What if there are more versions and you want to check out the 1000th version? In the Delta model, 
you'll need to apply all the changes sequentially from the first version to the second, third, and all the way up to the thousandth version. If there are more versions, say 10,000 or even 100,000 versions, what happens then? Because checking out involves adding up the versions, the more versions they are, poorer the checked out performance becomes. This is a major drawback. While this method is efficient for storage, it has the drawback of being inefficient during checkouts. The snapshot model addresses this drawback of the delta model. The main difference between the snapshot model and the delta model is how data is stored. While the delta model records only the differences when creating a new version, the snapshot model stores the entire content of the repository at a specific point in time. Let's take a closer look through a diagram. This diagram shows how data is stored and restoring using the snapshot model. There are three files in the repository, A, B, and C, and four versions are stored, version 1, version 2, version 3, and version 4. Looking at file A, the first version is identical to version 1. In the second version, the added content is stored. The actual content in commit 2 includes everything from commit 1. In commit 3, the entire content is saved, including the changes from commit 1 and commit 2. The same applies to commit 4. Although the actual change is small, this version stores all the content. Thus, the snapshot model saves the entire content in each version, not just the differences from the previous version. Let's dive into a detailed example to understand how the snapshot model works. When the first version is created using the snapshot model, two objects marked in red are generated as shown in the diagram. One object stores the content of hello.c and the other stores the content of foods.html. Looking at the objects, here is the file's content. And here we have what is called a hash. The first object is labeled C3DF6AF. And the second is labeled F131DE2. Here, the hash values are simplified to 7 characters, but the hashes used in Git are 40 character hexadecimal strings. This is the first time we encounter the term hash, and since it is a crucial concept in Git, let's explore it in detail. A hash function maps a message of arbitrary length to a fixed length data string. The value obtained from a hash function is called a hash value, hash code, or simply hash. For example, if we input the sentence I have a dream into a hash function, we get a fixed length arbitrary string as output. Here, we use the hash function that returns a 40 character result. Hash functions have several characteristics. First, a hash function always outputs a fixed length hash value regardless of the input. For example, we input a 10 character text like I have a dream into hash function. It produces a 40 character hash with the input. Now, if we input a text that is two later pages long into the same hash function, what will the output be? it will still be a 40-character hash, just like the 10-character input. In summary, whether you input a 10-character text or a 2 pages long text, the hash function will always produce a fixed-length hash value. The second characteristic of hash function is that even if a small part of the input is changed, the output hash value will be completely different. For example, we input the word apple into hash function and get a hash starting with C3DF6A. What will the hash be if we input apples with an additional S? Although only one character is different, the hash value will be entirely different from the hash for apple. This illustrates that even a small change in the input results in a completely different hash value. The third characteristic of hash functions is that 
you cannot infer the nth value from the hash. For example, you obtain this hash from the input apple, and you obtain this different hash from the input apples. Is it possible to guess the input that produced a given hash? No, it is absolutely impossible. You cannot guess the input value at all. Every single character difference results in a completely different hash. You can't tell how the letter A is converted or how the letter P is converted. Therefore, you cannot determine the input used to obtain a specific hash. So, what are hash functions used for? Hash functions are used in data structure like hash tables to allow very fast data retrieval. They are also used in cryptography and to verify data integrity. Among hash values, there is SHA, which stands for Secure Hashy Algorithm. It is a collection of cryptography hash functions. The most commonly used hash function in this collection is SHA1. SHA1 is used in many security protocols such as SSL, PGP. SHA1 produces a 40 character hexadecimal output. We have now covered hash functions and SHA1. All the hashes you see in Git are generated using SHA1. Let's return to the snapshot model. When the first version is created, objects are generated to store the content of the files. These objects have hashes that allow access to them. Subsequently, another object is created to access the file content. This object, marked in blue, contains the hash and the file name. Through this hash, the content of the file can be accessed and the file name is also stored in this object. Finally, another object is created to access the blue object. This is called a commit. In Git, the objects represented in red, blue, and green are referred to as blobs, trees, and commits respectively. This diagram simplifies the commit tree, and blob concepts. In the snapshot model, every time a new version is created, all data at that point is saved, and grab is created to link it to the previous version. What happens if you check out the third version? Unlike the delta model, which adds up all versions from the first to the desired one, the snapshot model can recreate the desired state using only the information from the selected version. There's no need to add up all versions sequentially. Thus, the snapshot model stores all the repository content at the time of saving using multiple objects and linking them for reference. Since the snapshot model does not need to troubles and apply differences for each version during checkout, it performs much faster than the delta model. Git is one of the version control systems that use the snapshot model. At this point, you might be wondering, if the snapshot model is faster than the delta model, doesn't it use a lot more storage space by saving the entire file content for each version? You might think that if a project managed with the snapshot model is one gigabyte in size, it will increase by one gigabyte with each new version. However, this is not the case. While the snapshot model does save the entire content of files and directories at specific points, it uses links for identical files and compresses the file content. Additionally, a garbage collector runs periodically. When pushing to a remote repository or if there are too many uncompressed objects, similar versions are converted into compressed packed files using the delta model to record only the differences. Git stores similar versions in compressed pack file and because the latest version is likely to be accessed frequently, it is saved using the snapshot model. Thus, Git primarily uses the snapshot model, but also employs the delta model to compress similar commits into pack file, preventing excessive storage use. When creating a new version in Git, a commit object is generated. You'll hear a lot about commits when using Git. 
What information does a commit include? A commit includes the following information. A commit has a hash and includes information such as the tree, parent, author, and committer. It is also contains hashes that allows access to the tree and parent, the author's name, and email, the timestamp when it was saved, and the commit message. One important part of commit information is the commit hash. The commit hash is generated using the SHA1 function. As we have seen, a hash is created from specific input values. What inputs are used to create a commit hash? A commit hash is made by inputting the commit's content into the hash function. In reality, there are additional headers and content which will be covered in other lectures. For now, understand that a commit hash is generated from the commit's content. What happens if part of the commit content changes? For example, if the commit creation time changes, which I mentioned is the timestamp, or if the commit message changes, what happens then? As we discussed earlier, even a slight change in the input to a hash function results in a completely different hash. This characteristic of commit hashes is essential to remember. Understanding this is crucial for properly using commands like rebase, which we will cover in later lectures. For now, remember that a commit hash is generated from the commit's content, and any change in the commit contents results in a completely different hash. In this lecture, we covered how git source data. Let's summarize what we learned. The Delta model only stores the differences between the previous version and the newly created version. The snapshot model stores the entire contents of the repository at a specific point in time. A hash function is a function that maps messages of arbitrary lengths to fixed length data. A hash function produces a fixed length hash value for any input. Even a slight change in the input results in a completely different hash value. It is not possible to deduce the input value of a hash function from its hash. It primarily uses the snapshot model, but it uses the data model to store similar commits efficiently. It creates commits to record the states of files. A commit includes information such as commit message, hash, parent commit, author, commit time, and changes made. The commit hash is generated from the contents of the commit and it serves as the identifier for the commit. That's all for this lecture. Through this lecture, you have learned how Git source data. If anything you didn't understand from the contents, feel free to ask anytime. See you next time.